Well, you're supposed to take like a mother-in-law with you or something like that. <laughs> They're all supposed to watch it. The mother-in-laws are supposed to watch your grandbabies. That's that's the rule. Well, this was her trip. We've got it just for them for Christmas. Oh, okay. But just to let y'all know, we are we are live. Okay. Kind of watch what you're saying. We're live. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's We're all going to hear about Brianna's trip. It's on now if you want to turn it on and see if it works. You should be able to see me. This should be a, a quick meeting, but you know. I don't know. I don't know. Don't know. Are y'all only discussing the drainage? Yes. Does it work? Not any other drainage? Yeah. You've got to double click it two times. Yeah, this is part of this. The drainage master plan? I, I yeah. Yeah, yeah. See the there's an arrow in the middle of the screen. Try pushing that. What, what arrow in the middle of the screen? We we went through this last time. Are you looking at the box at the bottom, the black box, at the bottom of the screen? No, no, no. It does not oh, scroll yeah. down to the box. Yeah, so I was training on the left, the left hand corner. There should be a black box. No, you're not on the right page. Okay, just forget about it. Bridge, Texas. Sound in it, she had the sound turned off. Yeah. How y'all doing? You know, I just get so frustrated talking to her about it. Yeah. Alliance for community. And then she'll do it when it's not turned on, and it comes up with a show from two months ago. She says, "See, it's the wrong one." I says, "Okay, don't worry. Whenever the live stream's turned on, it'll go to the one that's turned on automatically." meetings a week from Tuesday, right? Yeah, we're not going to swear at you until the end of the month. Okay. We're, you're not going to swear at me till you're not going to swear at me till the end of the month. Well, no, I didn't say that. I said we just won't swear at you until the end. Of the month. So you'll be here for the joint meeting on Tuesday with the uh, planning and zoning. Is that Tuesday? Isn't that Tuesday? Isn't that Tuesday? Yeah. yeah. I'm assuming if we have enough people. <laughs> Tuesday the seventh, joint workshop, P and Z. Yeah. At five o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, we just have to have four people. 
You do what now? Yeah, Mary. I did not know. I didn't even think about it. You have it, I guess. I don't know. He's the one. He's here. I just don't want to get right here. But he is here, and he'll figure it out. Because you have to have a little thing to set it up. Well, my son had his first port call in Thailand. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's his first port call in Thailand, not his first port call. Correct. Okay. I've been to Thailand. Yeah, he, uh, uh, where they were supposed to dock, there was another ship in the spot they were supposed to be in. Uh -huh. So they were in, uh, they had them docked at a floating dock. Yeah. And then they had to take a water taxi from the floating yeah. dock in. Yeah. And he, he, there's a young enlisted guy on the water taxi with them and the water taxi doesn't go all the way up to shore you have to get out and go in there well this enlisted kid stepped wrong did something wrong and hit hard and got hurt so we tried to carry him out of the water oh. <laughs> are you finished yep hey thank you so uh, you have a computer all ready to go Right. And you know to talk directly into the mic. Someone turned it off, I think, or they turned it down. Because you could hear me very clearly earlier. I wonder. Hello, hello, hello. Did she be about thirty-five? Well, oh, oh, total, total was. Uh, uh, earlier, you could hear me just fine. It was loud. I haven't listened, but it's about. Yeah, but it doesn't seem as loud as it was earlier. Well, it's loud enough. I know, but. He, he's got a quieter voice than me. I'm loud anyway. Oh, I'll give you a return for um, okay. I know the guys are picking up for the electric project. Hey, we signed, Sheen and I signed the checks, but these are, you need to sign that for the uh, new, two new accounts. Signature card. When are they going to Okay. Yeah, because it's like, uh... I think there's some discussion about who put that there. Originally, it was, we thought it was streets. It's the streets. But it turned out it was them. Correct. Yeah, no, Correct. Okay. Because, I mean, they have their uh, their container already moved off there and everything. So, I want to make sure that we don't overlook it. I've said Dr. Best. All right. So, we'll use your HQ model. And I'll show you how to use it. And this evening I'm going to sign my uh, doc to support the, the okay. packet. Well, our, our oldest German Shepherd died on Monday. Oh, this was your son? The, yeah. yeah. And so we have puppy now. Yeah, what? Oh, puppy. That was quick. Oh. Loki, Loki had, was having withdrawals. Wow. Yeah, he was looking for her left and right and everything. So we got rescued a puppy that was at the sh local shelter here. Oh, cool. Half Shepherd, yeah. half Great Pyrenees. So we'll be able to compete with Loki on size. That is a dog. <laughs> well, as big as Loki is, we need a dog. German Shepherd. Great Pyrenees. Well, that's what we have already with our German, with our, our four-year-old. He's from Germany. And I mean, his paws are bigger than the palm of my hand. He just got done growing up, and now he's starting to fill out. And growing up, he was 107. They said added another 20 to 30 pounds, and that's so his final weight. Like, you know what I learned a few months ago? I'm surprised I don't hear I have a clicker, but maybe that's what this is for. You have a clicker, yes. too? You know well, what you that name? The, the reason why they changed it was in World I, War II. I can, World War II well, I can give you one that will work as a clicker. You have to set it up for it to show Genetically the same it dog. Yes, it'll, same it'll dog. click through. It just, uh, they, they call them, yeah, in, during World War II, the Allies couldn't right. call their dogs yes. German Shepherds, so they called them Alsatian Shepherds. Yeah. Oh, Asia. So this is your, the big button. Is the only button you have to get. Alsatian Shepherds. Alsatian Shepherds. He brought the what? Sustenance. So you're not in yeah. the present. Deborah. Everybody. Yeah, Debra brought. Is that his? Oh, this is mine. There's his. Oh, there it is. I knew it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.
Hey, I'm gonna give this to Paul. He's here. Oh, you did. Okay. I didn't touch him. <laughs> For a live stream. Okay. Yeah. 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 actually been working on that. I've seen some other ones that do it really, really well. Where you can see it. Yeah. For sure, yeah. No, it's not the camera. It is uh, the technology behind it. It's not me. <laughs> Got a picture 
up that says to continue contact our support team and make sure to include your public IP address for live streaming. I'm, I'm just a live streaming up storm over here. I don't know. Okay. Is that from the website? This is from the website. He said. He says it's. He says it's not tonight. I have one in my office. I just forgot to grab it. Well, it may be that our IP system is, or our service is changed or something. Because I had to go in and do a different thing this time. All the others have been fine. I don't know if it's live streaming to okay. Facebook. I don't, I don't do all that part of it. He, he, he doesn't watch it on Facebook. Give it to you. Well, some people do. And, and let me see. Where, where is it on the website? It should be at the very bottom. It says live meetings. Yeah. So I let them know that. Well, it says publish when you're ready to share. Do you want to share it? Yes. It's yes. Live. Yeah, it doesn't work. You want to share? This is what you get. That same message? I yeah, that's what that's what Joe is getting. Mm -hmm. My wife is right. Okay, let me talk to you. I still want to stop. Okay. Those so families. He just handed them to me before you walked in. seven puppies they found homes for four of them and last I knew there was still three left did you did you could you see if the police chief is interested in maybe uh, getting one trained for the city no um, it's like 35 grand to train I understand that but this is a half a million dollar yeah. dog that would save us that money there. Yeah, well, I mean, I say that. No, I, I really should stop saying those so quickly. I, I don't know. We need to ask the chief and see if he'd be interested. But I, bounce it, that it off because a, we got three puppies there, pure right. Belgian Malwas. Right. Someone dumped five of them and they're worth half a million there was, dollars each. There, there's seven puppies that were dumped. Oh, yeah, Belgian Malwas are. They're worth a lot. And some, but not half a million dollars. Oh, yeah. Then why would Okay, are we giving up on the live stream? Because, well, I'm live streaming. I don't know where you're going. It's not working. If everybody will give me a second, oh, let me take a look. Once, once, the, once they're trained, they're worth half a million dollars. And, so they, and the I'm base, black one is the training base for military police, TSA, local uh, police I'm departments, I'm and everything. And if we provide the dog, that would reduce the amount. Remember a couple of years ago, were you in council when we authorized the police officer? Yeah. And of course, he, we paid quite a bit yeah. because we had to train him and the dog. Yeah. And then he left and went to another one that was, yeah. Well, his wife was active duty. Well, no, I'm not tall. Yeah. But that's the problem is I, I for little cities like us. But, well, we're not, we're not little anymore, really. We're growing. And with us having... A very good breed available at our hands. But you know, I just realized if, 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 if our attorney was here, she'd probably tell us we shouldn't be talking about this. Well, the meeting hasn't started yet. Yeah, we're, we're, we're actually, there's three of us that's called it. We just had a walking forum. Yeah. I think only Sorry. two people said something. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
or do something to get it to share Facebook to Facebook too? It's supposed to be. And see so right now, it's, 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 it's not live right now. Mm -hmm. You have to go back and take this again. It's DVD, but well, it's showing live either, so I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm. It doesn't look really good. Oh, right. Live meetings. Going to live meetings. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 All right, well, we are going to go ahead and call this meeting to order at uh, 6.07. We'll start with uh, roll call. Shannon Martinez, District 1. Paul Carey for District 2. Bill King, District 3. David Mers, Jr., District 4. Herb Dyer, District 5. And Darren Schroeder, Mayor. Everybody is present. Next, uh, citizens' comments. If anybody would like to speak for citizens' comments, please state your name and address. Uh, for the record, and please keep comments to uh, three minutes. Under 20 minutes, okay. Um, for you, yeah. <laughs> my name is uh, Robert Lee. I live at 1314 Gentiles uh, here in Castroville. And a very nice ceremony you all had on Sunday. Uh, I hope that was well received by the guests. So thank you so much for that. Uh, I'm pleased that uh, you guys hopefully are going to not kick this can down the road. And uh, if not, I'm sure Helen will be. Uh, attached to your back for the rest of your life uh, for not for not doing something and I gave my my stuff to Herb in case I uh, couldn't make the meeting but uh, as I told him to tell the rest of you I have probably more water from rain runoff crossing my property than anybody in the city and uh, because I put in a expensive ditch with a with a, uh, a wall in order to funnel that to the back I've I have uh, successfully kept water from getting in the house from that. It's gotten close a few times as it overtopped the wall, washed the wall out, and so forth. And even Scott uh, came down shortly after he came here and looked because I had a five-gallon bucket uh, went from up the hill, down Geneva, turned the corner, comes onto my property, and it went 600 feet further to the back. Okay, and a lot of that was not a ditch. That was just open grassland but there's enough water that goes down there that it carried that bucket successfully another 400 feet past the end of the ditch i have a lot of water coming across there and yes i've talked to mr salinas uh, when he did the first survey i believe in cape freeze about about my issue i provided pictures and everything else under the sun uh, over the years the eight years i was on council i was out with all the rains uh, recording everything to see what was what I will say that uh, Ms. Delavan's uh, Athens Street issue, I think as much water is coming from London Street down to Gentiles, probably even more than comes from the cemetery uh, because all those areas drain uh, onto that side street and add significantly to it. But, you know, I've, I've been there watching when you get four or five inch rain, seeing how much water accumulates up there uh, around London. And it, it's, it's significant, but uh, it's not near what comes out the other end down there. And that's the same where, where I live off Geneva because it all comes down the hillside and all those side streets, and uh, it's, it's lovely. Um, anyway, uh, there's a bunch of things that have been recommended over the years uh, from prior engineers. You know, this, this issue has been going on for 20-something <laughs> years now. We haven't turned a wheel other than the one we did on Naples. And uh, it was quite successful in, in funneling a lot of that water, the one that goes by Jeff's house uh, d down to the river. I think it's Naples. Uh, that We put the 60-inch pipe under the street uh, to get it from McDonald's area and all that stuff over there by the library and take it down to the river. But uh, let's do some of the smaller projects. You know, we can, we can make a dent in some of that. And, uh, and like, uh, I think it was Garcia, the guy that was the 
the uh, constable for a long time lives on the corner there of London and, uh, and Athens. Uh, they built a, a concrete barrier around the edge of his property, and that's, that stopped his issue. And so there are some things we can take like that, with elevating some areas and dropping some others, and to see what, uh, what that does for us. certainly won't cost a lot of money. And thank you very much, and enjoy your evening. Great. Thanks, Bob. I'm Larry Walter, live at 132 Village Bath here in Casterville. Uh, I guess this may not be the right time to talk about this, but the drainage behind in the proposed new subdivision that they're putting in or proposed going in. There's a, a uh, pond right at the back of my property through a drainage ditch that we already have flooding issues with. And now we're going to put a, a drainage pond back there on top of it. Now, the city did go in and buy the lot next to mine, which is a vacant lot, for drainage, I was told. So I don't understand if they bought that for drainage. I'm willing to sell my drainage of 55 feet deep and 100 feet, quite 90 feet wide, to the city also because it's still part of the same drainage. If you're buying up land and drainage ditches, uh, that's part of the drainage ditch. I've been arguing with the people over every year on taxes because my property's worth more. I've got this huge lot. No, most of it's a drainage ditch. And then whenever it rains, it's coming into my house, coming up to my house. It has never come in, but it's come up to it. And I have pictures of all that city has pictures of all that because I give it to them. But, you know, it's just putting more water and nothing's ever done to, to alleviate the problem. Uh, you know, the, at one point, uh, I think I talked to the city manager and then he was taking care of the drainage and stuff. They had come up with, they had to widen all those ditches back there and deepen them and the whole bit. It was going to cost $110,000. And supposedly the money was approved by city council for them to do that, to go in there and clean all that out. The problem is the water can't get out from where we are because those other ditches are all full and it has no way out. Well, that was never done. There was a, a fix went in where they would dug a little dirt behind the Methodist church there to kind of straighten that up. But nothing else has ever been done except they bought the lot for drainage. But what's being done on that lot for drainage? Uh, nothing. You know, so you know, I'd, I'd like to sell mine too and get that off the tax rolls so I can pay less taxes on the drainage ditch that I can do nothing with. Uh, I'm gonna talk to this coming week, I've talked to city council and see if we can get something put on the agenda for uh, city council to look at because you know, this is you're just putting more water in on top of the problem that we already have, and uh, of course, every time. You ask something, well, the developer's coming and he's going to run and he's got to do stuff down at 471 and they've got to widen some places and, you know, I get this drawing and I don't see anything that shows anything like that that's possibly going to happen on that. So uh, it's, it's a real concern, you know. Everybody around has already had water in their houses. Uh, some of them have. Not on my side of the street where it's really flooding, on the other side, or in the big ditch. It's coming up from the back side. And now you've got all these other houses and all that drainage is coming off that back hill into that ditch too, since they've developed that across from us. So, uh, you know, there's just a whole lot of stuff that, you know, there's just, and there, that's a long area of 45 foot wide drainage ditch that goes through there. Like say, the city wanted they could buy it and put a retaining wall up on our side where it comes off the hill and hits the retaining wall and it forces it out that way. But I don't know how that's going to work whenever it goes across village path. It goes into a concrete drainage ditch on the other side and that fills up that deep. I mean, I don't think you can have two or three foot of water coming across the road without having a culvert or something there. And I'll ask you to wrap it up. We will be talking about some of these things tonight, so please stick around through all of it. I think that we are covering that portion in Country Village and some of the improvements for the uh, MP home thing. Yeah, I will, uh, once the, the 
uh, public comment period is closed. If you'd like me to address the purchase of that property, I can. The okay. other items, the drainage ditch, is going to be part of this presentation. Perfect. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, I Thanks, appreciate, you. appreciate you. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Is there anybody else that would like to speak for citizens' comments? Please. How are we all this afternoon? My name is Daniel Melton. I live at 1106 Florence Street. Um, we have had our house flood. We've lived there for five years. We have had our house flood twice. Uh, once was worse than the other, obviously. Um, as a matter of fact, it was two days after, before he was, Mr. Schroeder was elected mayor, that he stopped by the house and he took a look and saw what was going on. Um, all I want to say is whatever is happening is it's coming from the two side streets that are going down to the uh, river. It's coming once it gets to the point where there's just so much water that those streets cannot carry that further anymore. It comes across on Florence right through our yard. And once it gets to the point where our yard is just so saturated, it comes right in our front door. Um, whatever y'all can do to mitigate this. I don't care what it is, but I can't have my house flood anymore. Um, it's getting to the point where I know, obviously, it hasn't rained in the past four years that we've seen anything like this, but it's going to happen, and it's going to keep happening. I've tried everything that I can do uh, as far as building berms, uh, cleaning, making sure that there's nothing else that where the water would naturally flow around the house is not obstructing it. So far, that seems to help, but obviously, we have not had four inches of rain in an hour in years. Um, I really do hope that y'all find a solution, find a cheap solution, obviously, because this is our tax dollars here, um, and we can get something done here pretty quick. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, would anybody else like to speak for citizens' comments? <coughs> All right. We'll close that out. Uh, Mayor, would you like me to address yeah. the acquisition of that property? Yeah, let, yeah, let's talk about that. Sure. Just to clarify, so it, it it wasn't that the city was buying drainage. I understand that that's kind of what it's turned out to be, but the real issue was that that lot was being proposed for development, and there were plans uh, being submitted to our or were submitted to the city's permit office for a new home, and uh, fortunately, those that buyer fell through. And the city reached out to that developer and said, look, uh, this if you build a home here, it's going to exacerbate the, the drainage issues in the area. And we looked at acquiring that property to prevent its further development. So, I, I, again, I, I, I want to distinguish between those two. It's a fine line, but there is a difference between acquiring drainage and acquiring a property that was imminently going to be developed and cause further drainage issues. So it was drainage related, the acquisition was, but it really was intended to, to prevent uh, further exacerbation of the drainage issues in the area. I think that's the only point of clarification I have. Well, and it was that was twofold because it was it was the drainage, and it was for people in Country Village with kids to have access to the park that's going to be built in that subdivision. So well, it was a combination. Yeah, yeah. to be uh, to access. Oh yeah, in the subdivision. I was going to say we can be very very clear. That property will yep. only be in access. It'll yes, be like yes. a green belt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. If, if this is the same property that we discussed. In Year ago, yeah. right? Yes, yeah, the lot itself was two thirds drainage to begin with. Yeah. Right. So, is there a park going in on that lot? No, no. To be It'll clear, give access to the park that's being built in the subdivision, the new subdivision that's going in. But that that property won't be a park per se. It may have a, a walking trail. It may have some trees or other things if they're deemed appropriate. But it won't be a park. All right, so let's go to the next item, which is a presentation by City Engineer K. Fries and Associates on Drainage Master Plan. Um, we'll talk about timing and purpose of Draining Master Plan, uh, talk about the 2002 drainage improvements, and then the specific study area, uh, the Athens drainage area south of Highway 90, uh, to discuss process and findings, projects and estimated cost, potential funding sources, um, are we just talking about, I'm sorry, I thought that we were talking about some of the other portions. We're talking about like the overall where you would concentrate it for the whole city and then being very specific on that one area. Is that correct? 
I, I believe so. So okay. we're doing an overall recap of the master plan. We're going to focus in on a few select project areas, and then we can take the conversation wherever we'd like. Thank you. Okay. Well, then I'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you, Mayor and Council. A.B. Salinas. My name is A.B. Salinas with K. Fries. And uh, today we're here to talk about uh, just the drainage programs that are occurring within the city, kind of where we are on those things, and kind of just recap everyone, give a refresher on, on some of this. Oh, uh, if we can go to the next page. You have a clicker. Oh, right. <laughs> I mean, I can do it from here. Okay. No, no, we're, we're good. So I, I did hand, oh, hand out um, some forms that if you, if you would like to fill out um, some information specific to your drainage issue that you have, or if you know of another drainage issue that's occurring in the city, uh, if you could please fill that out. Uh, there's paper forms, or you can also do the, the QR code there and, and fill it out. There's a, a map that you can also identify the location with. So today's presentation, what we're going to be talking about is we'll start with an overview of the drainage master plan, what that is, what it covered, and then we'll talk about some specific projects that we're currently working on trying to advance as part of the the CIP list that came from the, the master plan. We'll talk a little bit about funding opportunities that we've been working towards and um, some other items that relate to it, which is the, the drainage policy and criteria. As we all know, there's a lot of development that's planned in and around the city, and so how do we kind of get in front of that and then discuss any sort of new and emerging issues that have been developing that uh, maybe we need to look at addressing moving forward. So the key elements of, of what the, the drainage master plan looked at is it started with doing a, a citywide flood risk modeling and assessment. So it, it basically we mapped out the flood risk, the riverine and neighborhood flooding that's occurring throughout the city. Then we use that information to help identify uh, drainage improvements, areas that had major flood concerns. We went through a, a process of uh, public stakeholder input and then we took all that information and we started to develop uh, project solutions conceptual and then we ran through that in developing a, a prioritization list from that so we took into consideration uh, public safety economic uh, concerns project timing downstream uh, impacts and and then organized everything into a priority list we also looked at uh, drainage funding opportunities where we could find ways to implement some of these projects. We looked at operations and maintenance considerations of some of the bar ditches and how do we maybe look at improving that. And then we looked at kind of a bigger picture regional perspective of uh, when you take into consider future development, you know, what are the other things that we need to be looking at and, and try to um, address as far as from a policy and uh, criteria perspective. So from the master plan, we identified, we focused in on 10 projects. These are the, the 10 that we have. And the map shows that a lot of the problems are around the older part of the city and then going towards the east on Flat Creek and around 90. Those were some of the areas that we focused in on. Uh, so we had River Valley Road. Um, Village Path, Flat Creek, that's kind of the country village area, Garcia Creek, um, Athens and Algiers, Naples and Lorenzo, those are all really big projects. Lower Lacoste Road, Provident Avenue, uh, the Valley Mobile Park over there by 90 and Flat Creek, and then uh, some issues there at the Castroville Airport. So we we took that list and then we, had, we came up with um, some conceptual solutions. We developed some cost estimates. And uh, so that's what you see on that middle column of adjusted cost. Uh, so for today's presentation, just applied an inflation factor from uh, 
since we last ran those numbers and then came up with uh, these figures here. And then I have uh, just a summary on the status and where some of these things are. So for Village Path and, and the Flat Creek tributary drainage improvements, um, there is a private development, a subdivision that's um, currently in design and permitting. And through that process, we're working with uh, the, the developer to see if we can implement some improvements there on uh, the Flat Creek tributary. And then um, on Garcia Creek, this has become a, a really high priority concern for us. Um, this is where there's a culvert crossing and a lot of erosion that's happening and it's starting to scour out uh, the concrete apron and starting to undermine the, the foundation of that road. And so over, eventually, there's going to be an issue of likely the water line collapsing and, and eventually the roadway washing out. So that's about to become a lot bigger of a problem. And so that's something that we need to work on addressing soon. We talked about the Athens, Naples, and Lorenzo areas. And um, there's a, a lot of runoff that comes to each of these areas. We've What we worked through in, in the master plan was kind of the, the I, the ideal solution in terms of trying to provide a 25 year or greater uh, flood reduction benefit. Obviously that is a very costly endeavor so we've been trying to find funding for those but there are perhaps some lower cost solutions but will not provide the 25 year benefit um, but maybe can help mitigate towards some of those smaller uh, storm events. Um, I won't get into much more on, I guess, the rest of the projects, but that's kind of a summary. We can come back to any of these if you'd like. Okay. <clears throat> so I, I kind of covered this in the previous slide, but to recap kind of our priorities right now, well, we've been focused on the Garcia Creek channel stabilization. There's an increased erosion happening there. I'll show you some pictures here in a second. Can I go um, back just for one second? Sorry to interrupt. Um, just looking at this, I apologize I didn't catch this before, but L01. That's not actually, none of that's in city limits and it's not being impacted by anything that is in city limits. Why is that on our list? Is it? Sorry, let me see here. Valley Mobile Home Park. That's a valuable home park. Yeah, I think again, when we went through and did our master drainage study, we didn't look, we, we did not limit ourselves to areas inside city limits. We looked at what happens as development happens all the way up to mm. Tranco Road. Like, we, we, we looked at, yeah, yeah okay. what, where are our trouble spots? And you're, you're absolutely right. Like, L01 is not in, Valley Home, Mobile Home Park is not in our city, but. When we're, if you just kind of uh, get myopic about flooding and flood concerns and flood risk to places where people live, this is on our radar. Uh, whether or not it's really our responsibility is a separate, kind of a separate discussion, but that's why it's on here. Well, it's good to have it on there. I guess you're absolutely right. It's good to have it on there because, like with everything else, when something develops, I mean, the problems that we see right now have been exacerbated by, like, there's been no massive offender of construction. It's just we've had a lot of infill. Every time you cover up more land, it soaks in less water. So and, that's and good. right across 90 from Valley Mobile is the development that's in between the Chevy dealership and Alsatian Oaks. That's going to add to it. Yeah. So that's, that's a good thing to have it on there because. But technically, you know, they have to show no negative impact. I don't know what the right term is, Brianna, but there's a adverse yeah, no adverse impact. Uh, and that you know, engineers go through a lot of heartache looking at the topos and the FEMA flood maps and doing their calculations to show that these are the developers, engineers, and others that they're that what they're doing, whether it's detention or reshaping, which you can see is happening. There, there's detention being built in various places. There's reshaping the floodplain, but they have to go through and, and prove that that will not have an adverse impact on their neighbors. So supposedly it doesn't, but I think our, our own anecdotal evidence, not just in Castro, but all over, is that when you add something and cover it up, it doesn't matter, especially if you look at residential, 
um, the, the infill lots, as you mentioned, Mayor, which don't go through that level of scrutiny, the impacts seem to add up over time. And that seems to, I think that bears out. That seems to be what happens. So when you raise the, the surface level downstream, it backs up the surface level upstream. So even if it's not you know, even flowing into Castroville, it can affect what does flow out of Castroville. Right. All right. Great. Thank you. And I, I think this map here depicts that well of this area that we're talking about is on the downstream end there on the south side of 90. And if you look in yellow, those areas are drainage basins. Those are the contributing areas to each of these uh, sub watersheds. And a lot of that is north of the city. So you have Flat Creek and Kemp Creek and the contributing area comes pretty far north. And so there's definitely, there's a concern as development happens within the county and outside of the city, as well as development that occurs within the city, is how is that growth going to be handled? And I think there's an important element to all of this of having a strong partnership with the county and in, in, in talking about that development because these cumulative impacts. high priority and a focus of a lot of discussion and just kind of share some information on where we are and a little bit on what those solutions look like. So let me start with Garcia Creek. And this was something that we had looked at in the master plan and you know it's been something that's been progressively getting worse over the years. There is a, a culvert there um, on Geneva Street. You can see on the bottom photo that's uh, the downstream side of that outfall, and it's started to erode that apron. And you can see on the side banks of that channel that they're becoming vertical, which is highly unstable. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is uh, some pictures of that same location more recently. So you'll see uh, just more incising, more erosion that's occurring. And then on the bottom photo, there's a, a water main that's kind of hanging on there by dear life. And so um, we've been talking about trying to advance this project and, and, and some funding. And I think maybe there has been some funding identified. Yeah, so just to clarify, the next council meeting, which will be May 14th, you'll get to see AB again. And he'll probably use some of these same slides and talk in a little bit uh, greater detail about the timeline for that project. But that is going to, uh, the bonds for that project will be approved at the May 14th meeting, and we'll also talk about the timeline of then going and issue that project. Okay, great. Fun stuff. We'll see you all in a couple weeks. But yeah, the erosion is, is something awful, and it's starting to build back into people's yard, backyards and everything, and falling down into the creek bed. So. Right, and I think that erosion, yeah, it migrates pretty far downstream. It does. It's eroding backyards, property. Yeah, because so we get the rush from 90, coming right down there and just and then add the neighborhood and everything. And when that gets backed up, it backs up into River Bluff. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, one of the bigger issues with that is it's kind of a, on a steep slope. And, yep. and so it's it's just the water's moving too fast. Yes, sir. Another area that we looked at was Village Path and Flat Creek. And uh, so this is where the Country Village subdivision is. This is where Village Path is that we heard about earlier. and there's a need to increase the capacity of that of that channel and so that's another one where we've been working in partnership with a developer and the plan subdivision improvements to go in and 
do some improvements on widening and, and deepening the channel. Um, I don't really have much more to update on the status of that, except that you know I think we saw a first round of the permit submittal for that. I think they're still pretty early on in their design process, and so we're still kind of working through that. Okay. Um, the other area is Naples Street, and this is largely focused in on the, the north side of 90 and older part of the town where there's not a whole lot of storm drainage infrastructure and a significant amount of runoff. This map shows uh, in blue the flood depths for the area that we had come up with and to alleviate the flooding and when we say alleviate we're talking about aiming for at least a 25 year flood benefit. It, it requires a good amount of storm drainage infrastructure and we have to take that storm drainage infrastructure all the way to the river. So um, it's a good amount of pipe and it's a good amount of street reconstruction and utility adjustments and so that, that drives the cost. Similar with uh, Lorenzo Street over by downtown, uh, storm drainage improvements, inlets, and kind of a similar story. We go back to, oh, I just want to read the individual items. So what are the items that we're seeing on these? I just want to get into a little bit more detail about what this is. Uh, on, on the map? Yeah. It's so the very top left on the legend, the legend is very, very small. Yes, it is. What is that? It, it is quite small. And I don't know if I have another exhibit that kind of blows it up. But I'll try to explain and, and maybe we can blow it up on the presentation. What you're seeing is, okay, on the left of the legend is the storm drain pipes. We had color coded those by size. Um, so blue was like a 24 inch pipe and all the way up to red being a, a pretty large box culvert. And so what's pictured here is the proposed storm drainage infrastructure that would uh, that we had basically come up with as a conceptual solution shows showing on the downstream end or the right side of the map in red a box culvert and as is moving up all the way to the left of the screen it gets down to probably like a blue pipe which is like a 24 inch or 36 inch pipe how big is the box culvert i don't know if it was like a five by four or One that's there right now. No, we're right, right now. The thirty-inch, uh, uh, thirty-six inch. Yeah, I, I, I also cannot read it, but so are a we pretty large which box. Color are we talking about? Excuse the me. Red, the red is ninety-six by sixty-four, so eight by five and a half feet. Big. Mm -hmm. So are we saying that what was put in there twenty years ago was not big enough to handle? Right. Correct. I don't think it was 20 years ago. I think it was that one was not the one we were in, so that, that goes back to the, the one tech stop did their stuff. Okay. So the 60s? Uh, uh, 40s. 40s. Hmm. When they put it in initially? Yeah. Okay. Uh, because basically, right there next to uh, Richards or Russell's law office. Um, that's where the inlets are, so it's all that sort of slow yeah. until those those inlets, and then that that's where the water comes through. So, I guess we've traditionally had flooding in that area through rain events because of those inlets there, just on the north side of ninety. Right. There, there's not a whole lot of storm drain inlets, and there's in the in the on the map you see. In, the purple dots; those are all proposed inlets, and so right, there's yeah, there's only the one inlet. Yeah, um, and, and so those inlets, maybe they can take 
10, 20 CFS, and you may have an order of magnitude much higher of 100 or 200 CFS. Yeah, I think it's a 36 inch pipe from there all the way down to the top of the bank that goes into the river. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Okay. Um, moving on to Athens and Algiers, I think a lot of us are interested in the issues around this area and this is something that we have looked at over the years. It's something that the previous master plan looked at. It's, you know, I think everybody's familiar with kind of the history of trying to solve and address this issue. And you know, one of the major things is, is that there's a large contributing drainage area that runs through this neighborhood. And I think combined, it was something like 600 CFS and maybe the 25 year storm event. That's a lot, a lot of water. Uh, and so when we looked at this, we tried, if we're gonna do it, we try to address it at the 100 year uh, storm event benefit. Um, the 25 year and the 100 year, there's not a tremendous amount of difference when you're talking about the infrastructure. Um, but that's a lot of streets. And because we're talking about box culverts and, and significant structures and you have shared utilities in the roads by the time you go in and you construct these improvements you've basically torn up the entirety of the street you're replacing water lines and sewer lines as well as putting the storm drainage infrastructure so when you develop this cost it's you're, you're getting inevitably new water lines new sewer the storm drainage infrastructure a new street probably a curb and gutter system new driveways and so forth. And so that's kind of what what brings that cost to where it is. And uh, so I think we had that around, you have here 11 million at the low end to 15 million for phase one. And then we had broken out phase two, which is another three or 4 million. And we've broken that out because we felt like you could kind of do these two independently. This was a, the, this project, Lorenzo and Naples, we had been working last year to include this on inside the state flood plan. So the Texas Water Development Board um, has been putting together projects throughout the state and then they're using that list of projects to then identify which projects are going to get funding for, through that program, the Flood Infrastructure Fund. And uh, so we were able to get onto the list as a, what they call, an FMP, a flood mitigation project. So there's different levels. There's like studies, there's evaluations, and there's projects. Um, so it, it was a good thing to get to that level. The issue that we ran into as we were starting to prepare the application uh, this past month was that the latest census numbers for the city, the AMI, the annual, or was it the adjusted median income, is above average for the state. And because of that, we don't qualify for a matching fund contribution. You could get a low interest loan, but when we're talking about these numbers, uh, that's, that's a big loan. So we're still looking at other opportunities that we can, we can find. Um, really quickly on this, just because there are people here that are impacted by this specifically, where are the outlets of these? So for phase one, that all outlets on Athens Street? Um, I think we had it on Algiers, and then maybe an outlet on Athens. When you say outlets, you mean where's the water? Like, yeah, where does it enter the river? Right, the main discharge point is we were proposing a large, oh, I don't have it. I forget that I'm not. Okay. The low cost solution has so, it. Right here, going down Algiers for the low cost using barges. But right. The big project has it going down Athens. No, this says Algiers. Yep, there it is. Is yeah. that surface or underground? Or <clears throat> for the project that we were talking about here, I mean, these are all uh, storm drains, box culverts. And let's urban some gutter. Some, some training, training. Mm -hmm. Underground. And then 
we follow. So this, sorry, phase two also goes out, Algiers? Um, So, yes, I think we all have it at going to one discharge point. No, we, we haven't really gotten to that level of detail. So what we wanted to do with this is just kind of develop a high level solution, get a ballpark cost of what it might take to actually do the improvements. And then if we do identify the funding, then the next step would be to advance the analysis and the design to a more detailed level, call it a 15% design and also do try to optimize. We have to wait till later, after he finishes. Do you want to talk about each project now, or, or I got a lot of comments to make about this project and the next one, but I don't want to interrupt the presentation. If that's what's what your you preference. Want. I kind of like digging into them individually, but if you want to go through the whole presentation and go back to it, we can do that. I don't. I don't really. I suggest we do that. Let's get through the present. Let's get through the presentation okay. and then open up the comments. Let's go to my detectors. Okay. Um, so then last year we uh, re-looked at this area um, at the request of council and tried to find a solution that was you know, less costly, right? And something that we could maybe do sooner. And so what we did is we did a, a conceptual design where we evaluated the potential for constructing bar ditches within, between the right of way and the existing pavement and providing some either culvert improvements or some valley gutters or v-ditch crossings at each of the street intersections and trying to get that flow um, down and out to the river we went through this exercise and you know there's a number of challenges that we encountered in terms of right working within the right of way there's trees there's rock walls there's um, different structures to contend with but assuming that we can go in and we can grade this out uh, we went through that and kind of determined that this while would help wouldn't provide even a two-year storm event benefit there would still be overtopping in the street in that situation the price that we had come up with on that was I think somewhere around was it like 800,000 or so? So it, it's, it's still a, a sizable project with a, a relatively small amount of benefit, but it could be the benefit that the city is looking for, but it is, you know, not it, it is costly. Not right, right. So we've, we've been hesitant to recommend this and, you know, for us, we, we, tend to rely on the criteria of trying to at least provide a 25 year storm event but you know the goalposts can change at the direction of council um, but yeah we're, we're just not seeing a whole lot of benefit going back to that 600 CFS that's a whole lot of water when we're talking about carving out small ditches along the right of way a lot of impacts you're not containing that flow but you know it it may help a little bit All right, so for grant funding, we were focused on the most recent cycle or opportunity was the flood infrastructure fund. We talked about that a bit earlier, and we did pursue a few projects through that. 
ultimately determined that we didn't qualify for any matching funds, and so we've shelved that for now. Other grants that are out there, some of these I think are typically due towards the end of the year, um, related to different CDBG programs, uh, FEMA, Texas Department of Emergency Management, uh, HUD type programs. Um, so there's a list here of some of those funding sources. These I think typically are smaller in scale in terms of funding amounts, like they're not really dishing out 10 million or so for projects, but you know, they're a couple million or something like that, like that's I think reasonable. So we're gonna continue looking at grant opportunities and try to find some funding there. And then just as a, a refresher on, you know, the typically, right, the funding sources that we have to work with that are in our toolbox beyond grants, stormwater utility fee programs, that's something that cities use to, to fund projects. It's a good way to fund maintenance and provide steady funding towards those um, initiatives. Of course, property taxes, the general fund, general obligation bonds and so forth. Um, disaster recovery grant funding, that typically doesn't become available unless there's a presidential disaster declaration or um, something similar for that type of work. And then there's always opportunities to try to work with the county in partnership and, and try to get some shared funding there. So I'll, I'll kind of wrap it up with um, the other thing that the master plan looked at is an evaluation of the city's drainage policy and criteria. And with the development that's planned in the community, this is a good opportunity to try to put in there or refresh the criteria so that we're protecting the community from maybe any sort of future problems. Trying to create clarity in what that is and for the developers and for the community. One of the things that uh, I think we're seeing more and more with different communities is a mandatory detention policy. In the past, some communities have allowed for development to not have detention, and what you have is the cumulative impact of a lot of developments together result in a significant impact. And then there's been things like fee in lieu of programs and stuff like that, but uh, I think that's something for us to continue looking at, and I, I think I understand you know, there's an interest in, in exploring that, and we'd probably be looking at probably more so the, the north side of 90 and implementing some mandatory detention. We had kind of mapped that out just to kind of see what illustratively this might look like. Here we go. And so, this is just, again, conceptual, but if we were to have a mandatory detention in place, a program like that, that we'd be looking at north of 90 and probably the areas uh, contributing towards Flat Creek, which is the area that's largely undeveloped and at risk of um, you know, continued increasing flood risk. I, I, I think for clarity, I wanna note that, uh, so Tuesday, no, Wednesday night will be the Planning and Zoning Commission. There are two planned unit developments that are being considered. One is for the Heights of Castroville, that's just 35 acres next to Country Village, and then the other one is for Flat Creek. And uh, in both of those uh, situations, there is the, there's on-premise or on-property detention. So, um, you're, you know, one of the things AV is alluding to is like, like putting it in our code where we require it and certainly we're going through the UDO developments so that could be an element discussed there but uh, apart separate and apart from that as a stopgap as you all know um, as the council certainly knows we are um, in these development agreements with these developers as they come forward we're baking into that process things like detention that are not required today but that we really um, probably will be required in the future Do counties have the ability to have those requirements as well? I, 
But that's considering that they're in the ETJ. If they remove themselves from the ETJ, then does the county have any I know at least I, I was talking with Bear County last week, and they were talking about the same thing of mandatory detention and the cumulative impact of a lot of smaller developments and the issues that they're running into. And I think they have a policy, but I'd have to go back and well, I know verify that. that. Just anecdotally, you know, in talking to TxDOT, this came up, you, you can see on um, the property that's just south of the Flat Creek. So you've got Flat Creek, with, it's kind of confusing. They're the developer of the residential portion. And south of them, between 90 and their development, is uh, the commercial area that's owned by uh, Terry Dickerson. And there was a bunch of uh, flood area improvement done there, dirt moved and, and channels changed, et cetera. And uh, none of that came to the city because they aren't, that portion was not in the city limits, still isn't in the city limits. Um, the uh, tech stop wasn't aware of, of who you know, went through that permitting. So it went through the county, but uh, I don't know, you know, just anecdotally, I don't know how stringent the county's requirements are. Um, or what their process consists of. It certainly doesn't consist of talking to us or TxDOT, apparently. Well, I know so. that they don't, have a, they don't have a permitting process for uh, flood. Yeah, so. Hmm. So it went through FEMA. Yeah, so. Yeah, so I think the county did issue something, but it's because it went through Yeah, so, and I think you just said it. The county does not have a permit process for floodplain. Is that right? Is that they what you said? have no permit process. Yeah, no permit process at all. Yeah, I think the only thing for developers is like. Uh, hmm. Well, they wanted to maximize water. their their buildable space and reduce the insurance requirements on any structures that went in there. So if they can confine the flood zone to a smaller area, they've got more buildable property without insurance liabilities. So. Well, the, I, I think it's your main question is, can the county, a county in Texas adopt those types of things? Apparently, maybe, the answer is maybe, we think so. Uh, but does Medina County have anything like that? No. That's important to know when we talk about all the developments north of us. And, and so, I mean, those, these are some legitimate concerns I think we should all have. That's, that's interesting to hear. And from my understanding, if you're participating in the National Flood Insurance Program through FEMA, you're required to have floodplain development permits to be a participating community. So, I don't know, that's probably something worth talking to the county about. And then I, I think, you know, what I have seen um, through Bear County and another community there where that community de reviews everything that goes into the ETJ for their, for their city. And so maybe Maybe there's an opportunity to inter enter into an interlocal agreement where the city has an opportunity to review these upstream developments that do have a, an impact on the community. All right. Do you have any other slides? Or are we done? Uh, we're done. I mean, I have okay. other supporting slides, but that's. I, I would like to. I think it's. Uh, I think we need to get to some of the questions and uh, whatever you know, topics council wants to cover. And, that kind of stuff. There were some videos I know that uh, I received from you, Councilman Dyer. Do you want me to show those? I don't know. It's whenever you're ready to discuss. Yes, I'm going to open it up to uh, council comment. We'll start over with District 5. Well, District 5 is where Algier Street flooding is the problem. Uh, long st a long standing problem. Uh, and, and I think. Uh, this presentation tonight shows us that uh, the path we're on is a very low probability of being funded. I mean, we're asking the state to look at $65 million for the three projects that you mentioned and you briefed, and the probability of us getting that money is very, very low. So I believe it's time for the city to change our approach to handling flooding. Instead of saying we're going to put it in a study and send it up to somebody and hope they send us millions of dollars, we need to figure out what needs to be done and we need to start doing something. Now you've showed us 
I think we paid you $80,000 last year to do the study on, on how we could do low cost improvements like box drains and things like that uh, in the Athens neighborhood area and you came back with a plan that's about a million dollars. That was for the bar ditches, right. Just roughly a, a million dollars to do some small bar ditch improvements which you clearly showed us would not solve the problem. We all agree, we understand, it will not solve the problem. But doing nothing is not a plan, in my opinion. And, and I would like to recommend to the council that we take a different approach and that we, we look at these different projects and we figure out what is in the realm of possibility that we can do and fund. We're funding a lot of things in the park that probably are not quite as important as six inches of water in my living room every five years. I've been through a number of homes in District 5, the same owners, more than once. They're cutting the wallboard out of their living rooms because they flood. And they, they keep asking me as a council member, what are you going to do about this? Well, I've been out with the city administrator. We've driven. We've, we've, we've looked at all these different things that we might be able to do. Uh, I wrote them down tonight and I gave them to each member of the council. These are all ideas that we've talked about for more than three years. More than three years. We have done absolutely nothing on any of them. And I think it's time for us to prioritize and price and start doing things that we can do or things that we can contract out for a reasonable cost in not just Athens Street, I'm talking about all of these. I agree there's, there are problems in the city that are just as bad as Athens Street. So I'm not advocating that we do just Athens Street. I'm, I'm thinking we have to do a better job of prioritizing and I think we need to start funding and maybe move some of this money that we're talking about spending on other things back to flood management. So. Uh, that's probably where I'll leave it. It wouldn't, it wouldn't make any sense for me to talk about all these individual initiatives. I think let's get through everybody, and yeah. I think we should talk about some of the... Well, I, I'd, be happy to, I'd be happy to elucidate on any of them, try to explain them. I would like to tell you I made two mistakes in the document I sent you. One, one is very important. In item number three, I used the word Madrid Street by mistake. And it makes no sense what I wrote. So in item number three in my, in my email, please scratch out Madrid Street and replace it with Lisbon Street. That'll make sense to you. And that's, that mistake is very important. The other mistake is down in the bottom where I said it was we're waiting for $10 million. According to your briefing tonight, it started out at 3 million, it went to 6 million, it went to 10 million, and now it's up to 21 million. The same project. So scratch out the 10 million and write in 21 million. And and when, then, when you say 3 million, you're talking about from 2002, right? From back, uh, you know, 2018, from okay. then on. Since I've been on the council. 2018. So anyway, I'll be happy to explain any of these if anybody wants to talk about them tonight. Thank you. All right. Councilman Mercy. I don't know that there's really a whole lot to add on top of what Herb said. Um, yeah, this is a problem. It's been a problem for a while. I think that <laughs> something like that. Um, the only thing I'd add is, I guess, just a question of everything in here is about moving the water away faster. Has there been any look at possibly retaining it, especially that big flow coming off of Cross Hill, trying to retain it up by the cemeteries or slow it down coming down that hill just to reduce that? Um, were, were any interventions like that looked at but discarded? We That, that has been looked at in the past and 
what I think was looked at at the time was, yes, detention over there by where the church is in the cemetery, and then the vacant lot that the city has there on London Street. And we looked at providing the storage that was needed, and I think at the time of the report, maybe it was looking at like a 10-foot deep pond for it was focusing on a 25-year storm event. With that, we have to have an outlet for that pond, so that means we've got to put a storm drain pipe all the way down, you know, whether it's Athens or Algiers, somewhere. And I think there is the possibility for, let's say, like what we present here is kind of like the ideal, and then there's things that we can do that don't quite achieve the same level of benefit, but still provide a significant benefit. And so I think there is the opportunity for, let's say, detention of using that site on London Street, and if we could get some more detention through another property, that would help alleviate or reduce the size of pipes that we need there on Athens and on Algiers. Um, you know, it's still a multi-million dollar project, but it's, it's I think, less expensive and still provides good benefit. Um, so I think there's a possibility there. Anything else? That's all. Councilman King? Instead of a concrete digit pond there, you can use a mechanically stabilized earth one and reduce the cost quite a bit, I think, right? Because other, other, I've seen those in other areas, but when you all are looking at those, um, the soils are great for that. Um, to, are you talking about so, like, trying to increase the capacity of the storage? You're going to build a detention pond instead of reinforced concrete when you use a mechanically stabilized or a detention pond. Yeah. Um, but as a, because I know other that those are being used pretty common now um, in, in a big cost reduction. Um, I, I, I uh, Herb, I, I like your suggestions. Uh, I think, you know, priority is we're going to discuss here, as Scott said, the next meeting is we all saw the, the disasters happen there at the, uh, with the erosion problem. So, you know, we've got to take that into account. But then this has been... One question I have, we, we haven't had a lot of infill development in that area or north of that area. Uh, the, the Athens, South Athens uh, Street, this one. Depends on what time you look, period you look at, right? Well, I'm, I'm looking at, so, what, 50 years? How much inflow, how much, how much additional hard top cover have we placed that's impacted this, or has this always been around for the last 50 years? I think, was the last master plan done, was it 20 years ago? 22 years ago? No. Been that. Oh, the drainage master plan. The last one, the last it was 2002. 2002. <clears throat> and they had like the six projects in the city. And that identified this one as, as one of those projects. I don't know if a lot has changed since then to now, but whatever happened, I guess maybe prior to then. But I, I guess when I drive through the neighborhoods and everything, there's there's no new homes there. There's no new subdivisions there. Uh, north of 90 where like Dr. Bev property from Dr. Bess is undeveloped. There's very little development there and that does run under 90 and comes into it's up the top part of this. But well, we have had quite a bit of it. I think there's about two dozen. I say when I count just counting the houses that have been built uh, in the city in the last 20 years I bet there's probably 24 houses. Okay so, 20, so 24 hours 24 houses in this area that affects this Back, well, I, back, I would make sure the argument at all. Do, if it's do what? Lots of asphalt. The, the, the Baptist, Baptist Church. Okay. And um, I remember a study the city had authored some five, six years ago because of that issue, and our engineers looked at that and, and agreed that that really didn't affect It wasn't a major con I Again, you're asking, well, what, is the infill contributing? And I, I, I don't know. I, I would suggest that the real contributing factor to the flooding that you see is uh, one finished floor elevations that were not required to be a foot above the crown of the road, which is what the, the current standard is if you go with any city you know, across Texas, certain, probably the United States, that's just a normal standard. And that was not followed back then. And that, you know, it's not the fault of anybody who owns the house today. The, the foundation of the... The finished floor elevation of the foundation of the house, the crown of the road, that finished floor elevation should be 
current standard, a foot above the crown of the road. If those, if that were the case, I think there'd be far less flooding in many of these places that are saying, well, I'm getting water almost every time there's a six inch rain. Well, yeah, because your driveway slopes into the garage or slopes into the rest of your house. It's not, it, it's not ideal, but it, it, I mean, again, I'm not trying to blame the homeowner that, that it, that's the condition they're in. That's where it is. Um, so I, I think that's one issue. And the other issue that I like to remind myself of is you know, like, you literally live in a town that's three sides surrounded by a river with, with a hill on both sides, on, on the, the east and west side to a certain side. degree. Yeah. So I think this problem, when you think about it that way, has been, I mean, this has been an issue since this place was settled, I would imagine. Flooding has always been a concern. It's just become more and more, you know, again, it's that anecdotal, as things get covered up, it, I think it does. It's like just pouring a little bit of salt on top of the pile. It just adds up after a while. Well, and the other thing is that, like, um, so I didn't realize this. I bought my house what, almost eight years ago, and um, I was looking at the river coming up. I wasn't looking at the water coming down. Um, my neighbor, too, well, my neighbor directly next to me built his house right in the main floodway that most of that water was going. The rest of that water, the next neighbor down, that's exactly, if you look at those maps, that's exactly where that water was going. And so they built in these places well, where there's the like two. Was going. I'm sorry, there's two houses, right? He built his house. Do you know what year it was built? Oh, that was probably 20, uh, you guys would know. Uh, next to me, that was probably 20, no, 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 directly no, no. next to me. Uh, the Whitakers, yeah, that was probably 20, 15? Yeah. Yes, within the last 10 years, right? Right. And the house across the street from it is within even shorter, like within the last five years, because I think it was just constructed or newly constructed when I got here. I well, the, ones, the one directly across from me no, was not, built about the same time. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. the one directly across. It was about the same time. So there's some infill that's happened. I don't know that it's really contributed. You know, I, I think part what's really contributing is how the houses are built and where they're built. Um, the ones that the are The fact that they're being built. Honestly, yeah. that's, that's part of the problem. Well, in going back to this, our son lived in Houston when they had the big floods four or five years ago. The water in his house, his old neighborhood, no water entered the neighborhood. It all came within two inches of the finished floor. But you couldn't drive out, you couldn't walk out. The streets were, were underwater a couple of feet. Um, all the utilities worked. Uh, so whoever designed that neighborhood they were doing it right. Um, but again, so the, the, the literally no, no loss of water, sewer, electrical, gas, it all operated. In Where was this? In Houston, South Houston. Yeah. And, um, and, and the water didn't recede for two days. So they were little islands in this neighborhood. So I agree with you with the fact that if these houses all been built higher, which again, it's no fault of the people because this is just the way they did it back then. So I kind of see two big issues here. One is that this is a problem that's always been here and we do need to solve it, but it's not something, but, but as soon as something gets built north of 90, like where Dr. Bess's property, which I don't think was in your map, where you show contributing areas into that. Um, if you go back to the one that showed the, uh, uh, near, that near, one. Near Creek. Right, go back, you just passed it, right there. Um, so this would be far west. Um, you know what I'm talking about, Scott? Yeah. Because that comes under 90, and that also go right, right there, right there, right just north. That those big places that don't have where the houses meet up in the big fields. Hit the, hit the circle twice, and then hold it down. Yeah, uh, almost a little bit left where those There's big can, the the big can boxes are. That's empty acreage, and that's all owned by Dr. Bass. That's what he's talking about. And there's, and, it's, and he, I think, wants to develop one of these things, but there's a culvert that comes under 90, which is going to impact all of this. So I, I assume you all are looking at that. But, but so this is one issue, but then when we look at Flat Creek, that is where, as you show here, this is where we can control it from future being smart about future growth up there where it's not going to impact the people south. Um, I, I, I look at that mobile home park you're talking about on 90, and, and, and even that big stuff that Terry did. Um, it, it's going to go, I, I, it looks like everything in that thing is going to go over the top of 90 and actually flood out 90, but we'll
we'll see what happens with big rates sure down. Yeah. yeah, and then and of course in the mobile home park is just south of 90, right in that same area. So, um, big just big issue. That's the airport. Do what? Just down from that is yeah. the airport. But but Herb, I like your your list of stuff that you're saying because we can't afford the 25 million. Maybe we need to look at something else, and hopefully it'll because it's been this this issue's been around forever. So if, as long as we can do something. But again, we also have to look at all these other projects. Next night, anyway. Councilman Kerry? Um, we, I, I remember, gosh, it had to be 15 years ago, they put in a significant drain down Naples Street. And the drains, there are inlets between the Moy and the McDonald's, and there are other inlets on the side streets between there and the river to the south. And oftentimes, during and after storms, I see that those grates are largely blocked. There's debris, there's trash, there's all kinds of stuff that builds up on those drains. And, and I'm confident that that the existing pipe, which I think was probably 60 inches, if when they put it down, I don't know if you guys have studied that, but it's a large pipe. We've looked at it. I don't remember the size, but, but it's a it's large hard. pipe. And mm -hmm. I think that if we were to improve the number of inlets that, that access that drain and, and could put them in places more take measures that would prevent blockage of those inlets, we could reduce drainage considerably in that area. Um, you know, Castroville is where it is because it was an a, a easy slope around the river. And the highway is, comes through Castroville because it was an easy slope around the river. And the, and the fact is that, that we have flooding here because it's a very flat spot. Um, because um, this was a, it looked like a great place to sell. Um, so, I think one of the low impact, low dollar solutions that we could explore would be to put better inlet uh, access, better better inflow into that existing drain pipe that goes down Maple Street. Um, and as far as the bridge uh, on Geneva goes, I, I concern myself also. We have no idea how deep those foundations are and how close they are to being compromised. So we thought we'll have to remain a public safety consideration. Because um, if that's if that we lose that access to River Bluff, then there's only one way in and one way out. And that's not a good plan. So that's all I have to say. Flying cars. Councilwoman Martinez. <laughs> Sorry. Um, question regarding the detention ponds. Where I, I've been wondering about this and I just haven't brought it up. So for the maintenance of these detention ponds to make sure that they keep flowing, get cleaned out with the buildup of silt and everything, whose responsibility is that going to be? Is it going to be the HOAs for these new developments? Or how have we isolated that is, is the first train of thought. Second thing, this is me thinking outside the box, is have we reached out to Army Corps of Engineers? They're always looking for projects. Drainage is a big thing that they do as a, as a possible avenue. They're always looking for projects. I mean, gosh, they built all the levees and everything in uh, Mississippi and Louisiana. They're always looking for projects. They work they drainage stuff all the time. Have we looked at that avenue? The that short answer is money. yes, but keep going. Yeah, but that would that would save us money, but yet get it done very well and everything. So it's just something to throw out there, looking outside the box. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so a, a note, I really like something that she said. Let's make sure as we're going through the UDO process, we have something in there about maintenance of retention detention if it's not in our codes then um, over time and this isn't going to impact us now but 20 years from now it could impact others so we should make sure that that gets into the codes right now let's go through um if if everybody will indulge for just a moment i'd like to go back to the the one that i hear the most about is the one that's over by my house i'm not impacted by it so much uh, most of that flow, I get a little bit of flow that comes down from the hill, but most of that goes um, down Algiers, Athens, uh, Geneva. But if we if we take, can we go back to that one? That's uh, 
the two phase, very expensive plan. I'm wondering if it's better to pull up Google Maps. Well, I'm just wondering, like, one of the things, as I've seen that come down, like, um, I've got, I think that I shared the videos. Uh, when Scott first got here, we had coming down, coming down to Neva, it, you, and you can, you, you're actually showing it right here, kind of what it does. Um, Geneva is uh, kind of the bottom road there, uh, uh, left, right. It comes down, it doesn't go straight back to the river. We have paper streets here. Like if I look at where those paper streets are, that is one good way to convey some of that. That's Geneva. So I'm wondering with Geneva, um, I think Geneva is the highest impact for something like that. Getting it, yeah, have we looked at maybe just taking our paper street and lowering down the um, the okay. road, uh, Gentiles, and basically carving a path back to the river for that. Making intercept channels. Yeah. There's a there's a house in the way. It it you could put a bar ditch in on the property line on the east side of Geneva Street on the Paper Street, and it would be far enough away from the person's house that it wouldn't impact their house. But you could create a big ditch down to the river. Yeah, I'm just saying. On, that would help a lot. On the actual paper street, because yeah. that is. It's just all dirt property. right now. Nothing there. Uh, they've had a couple of fences, but they can move those. Yeah, I, I went over and talked to them about that, yeah. and they were not opposed to having a bar ditch put in there. They thought it would be helpful because you can, the water coming down right. Geneva Street's astronomical, but coming off the hill. The bigger impact is the stuff that's coming off of Athens, and there is a house down at the bottom of that. Um, uh, just as a reminder, for these public hearings, uh, we ha I, I'm going to open it up to the people that are here uh, just because I want them to have that. Let's make sure that we've got the, the um, public hearing so that we can open it back up. We well, don't have a public hearing, but by state law, uh, citizens can comment on any item that's on the agenda. They have to be recognized by the chair. Um, but you don't have it doesn't have to be listed separately. So if you want to open it back up, you can at, okay. at, at any point. Um, I I just I, I really want to take a look at this very specifically. You had a question, Mark? Yeah, I have a couple things. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I think it's a couple of things. Name and address, sir. Mark yeah. <laughs> On the ridge tension ponds, um, how fast do those, with all the water that comes off the hill, how fast do those things fill up? And once they're filled up, are they actually doing any good anymore? Do you know, retention ponds there? Are, the retention ponds that you all talked about, like oh. by the cemetery. Well, that was one of the other things that, that um, I think we should take a look at is, I mean, the, the two city lots that are there, when you were talking about the flow of that having to have an outlet, you were thinking about concrete? I was thinking it was a 36 or 40 inch pipe from the I, But in, on the city lots, were you thinking we're digging down the city lots and it's grass, or we're digging down the city lots and it's concrete? I was thinking grass. Yeah, I think that's better. I mean, you can get more volume. So I'm really, just wondering. So, well, speaking, so Mark asked a question, which is speed, how quickly, what happens, right? So, right. Well, it depends yeah. on the rain event, right? How, how much rain are we getting at the time to, as far as how quickly it fills up? But what you can answer, so those are kind of difficult questions to answer. What you can answer is what is its capacity? Well, that's, we can kind of define what is the capacity of a detention pond there, and then what happens to the water 
after that pond fills. And I think that's part of what Amy was talking, speaking to earlier, which is you'd have to build an outlet of some kind. So it would slow it down some, but, but how beneficial it is really comes down to, well, how big of a rain event. And most of the, the whether it's the bar ditches or the detention pond or lowering the, the little street areas, all of those have very, very marginal benefit. And what we mean by that is that um, you're, you're, you're going to barely affect a 25-year rain event, which is our most common rain event. It's, it, you, it, it'll be hard for, for someone to notice <coughs> a big, di big difference in that event. And the worse the event is, if you have a 100-year flood, you're going to notice a difference at all because you're still going to have the same amount of flooding, basically, right. uh, because of the rain. So that's, is yeah, that that's, fair? That's, I'm not an engineer, and I always get nervous when I start saying this stuff. That, <laughs> he was like, yeah, I, think, I don't know. I think it's fair to say, like, we can construct a pond, we can do a condition, we can do a number of things. They will provide some benefit, call it a marginal benefit. And I think the question is, is to, to the degree of how much we want to invest that benefit, you know, if we're comfortable with spending whatever it is, let's say a million dollars on some improvements or three million dollars on some pond improvements, but if we're all comfortable with that, you know, that's something we can do to try to move the needle. Um, but when the big storm comes, it probably won't be a whole lot of difference. Right, Mr. Mayor, can I say something? Uh, yes, please. The biggest problem in the Athens Street area is the water comes down quickly to, to that area where you're talking about building a retention pond. That would certainly help. But the problem, the, the, the crux of the issue is when the water gets to Athens Street, it immediately starts going down Athens Street right away. Most of the water goes down Athens Street. If we could find a way to try to help move that water further east on London Street, keep it moving so it doesn't start down the hill, and then we could distribute it between Athens Street, Algiers Street, and Constantinople, all of which would take it to the river. But the trouble is now, it's all going down right at Athens Street, and that block between Athens and Algiers floods. It just fills up with water as the gentleman stated earlier who said he's had two floods in five years. So we need to move the water eastward using bar ditches or whatever technology the engineers can come up with. Even if you built a retention pond, it would be great until it fills up. And then as soon as it fills up, it's all going to go down Algiers. We have to move it down London Street to the east. And I think that would help. So I noticed a lot. I noticed a lot of like when it rains and all the water comes down, all the silt comes with it. So the road is always rising yeah, on, on uh, Athens Street down, the Paper Street down where the manhole cover is. I think it's like 14 or 15 inches below the level of the, of the height of the road. So I know that's, I mean, I mean, they didn't build it that way, so I'm sure it's, it's all the stuff that comes flooding down there and builds up. Um, they come in, they scrape to get it down off the pavement into the grass area, and then three or four rains, it's, it's back up to making a... a a mound again, so then it backfills into the driveway. So that's when you work with dirt, from what I've seen about that, the house, the dirt and stuff, it just adds more dirt to the dirt you've taken out. Plus the city built a concrete barrier right there on Athens Street that directs it down. Yeah, so, and the other thing I was specific, have we ever thought about making the size of that road to keep the water on Athens Street instead of letting it portray out? I know that'd be, you know, you have a long way to go from maybe Mr. Perales's house down, but, you know, catch it at the turn, keep it on the street. I mean, build, instead of building the road, you could take the road down, I guess, but instead of building the road, everything down, you could actually build the sides up to keep it on to where it wouldn't filter into the side streets and stuff like that. So put curbs on the side. Yes. So they did, they did put like a three inch curb at our house the one time when it did flood into our house. And I mean, it goes over the top of that, but I put grass and dirt on top of that, so it actually turns into about a seven-inch curb, which keeps the water off. But we all know that it's under a, if a big rain comes, it's just a matter of time when the flooding is going to hit again. Well, the other thing that I'm wondering is where is the majority of the water coming from? I can't tell the volumes. How much of it is it comes coming off the hill. west and how much of it is going 
uh, east and south. You have a flood model. I don't know if you have it in here, though, right? I have a map that's on the computer. Maybe it'll Well, do you, do you remember just, I mean, but you... I think a lot of it's coming from the hill. Most of it? Just off of the page. <laughs> the bottom of that sort of well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of, like, some creative things that we can do. If we took the... Um, if we took our city lots, I mean, we have talked about what are we going to do with that. We've used it as a lay-down yard. It's kind of an eyesore anyway. What if we dug it down five feet, ten feet, um, created something like that, and just did some, planted some nice big trees there, something with deep roots that will help absorb the water faster, uh, and then talk to even um, uh, talk to the archdiocese about doing something on. They've got some cemetery lots that they're not using yet. Eventually, they're going to use them, but maybe we could talk to them about creating some additional retention, and we could work with them on doing something like that. There's also some, there are some infill lots that are kind of along that area. I think it might not be a bad idea for us to start looking at um, the potential of maybe taking some of those on or providing, another thing we could do is provide a benefit to people that are in that area and just say, like, basically give grants. If you will do this, and that is creating your own retention, doing these things, work with the city, we'll give you a grant to accomplish it. So if we can do that on a lot by lot basis, I think that if we did it like that, we could do it for a whole lot less until, and that would make enough of a difference in a bunch of different places instead of one big fell swoop that ends up actually causing more issues because you're just sending the water down really, really fast and we're just giving it to the cost. To answer your first question, Thank you. and having looked at this for quite some time, mm -hmm. the contributing area to the culvert at Alsace and Highway 90 on the south side of Highway 90 is about 100 acres. Gotcha. That's so, a lot of drainage that's going to show up right there. Well, that's the something area. else that we could do is talk to, like, Dr. Best. Okay. Well, it was just another, right? Come on up. Um, it was just another idea. We can talk to Dr. Best about creating some retention on that side as well. So catch it before it actually. The south side of Highway 90. That's, that's an alter, another alternative the whole, issue altogether. Whole hell and all of this. Oh, that's gotcha. That's what you were saying. Is I thought you said coming under Highway 90. No, just arriving at the south side of Highway 90 at the culvert at, at uh, Alsace and 90 from behind the church and beyond the that's why when they looked at the church's contribution to the to the flow, it really wasn't significant because there's 100 acres draining through that. And it's yeah, I've, I've watched it. It comes down like it doesn't. Very little that is actually coming off of theirs. Yeah. Larry Walter, 132 Village Path. Uh, y'all are talking about retention ponds. I know that lot that y'all bought over there next to me. Uh, they said it wasn't for uh, foot issues well the retention pond that's proposed going in right up above it if the city didn't own that that retention pond wouldn't go in there you couldn't be pushing that water through somebody's property so that was bought for flood control now you're talking about a retention pond you've already got 45 foot that goes the whole length of that part of the subdivision on the back side that i'm talking about and that's in my yard I mean, that's a retention pond itself. Why put that one in when you got the whole thing? Spend the money, go in there, buy that land up, because nobody wants it. I mean, it's it's doing nothing in their yard. You're, you're talking about uh, which area? His, his, he's talking about his backyard between mm -hmm. his, like, behind those houses, between right. where the new development's going in, mm -hmm. and the, there's a stretch of houses, right. and there's a, basically a drainage channel that runs right on their fence line and depending on the rain and everything else, it, it goes into the heights. Right. Yeah. So and it goes, it's long. It and goes, the contributing area, where's most of that water coming from? From the, from field, from the, the fields. proposed new hill that they're going to put all this in. Okay. Okay. So we got the retention. That water's still going to come into that. So why not use it as retention? Put concrete down on the bottom end of that property so it doesn't come into all of our houses and force it down yeah. to go across. Of course, well, then you're going to run into another of, problem because you can't put that much water across the street. Right. Part of the the requirement on our developers is that they're not conveying additional water, so they will have to handle some of that. They're actually, um, through this, are looking at doing some additional 
um, floodplain management, I think that your problem decreases pretty significantly, pretty quickly, with that with that being developed. Yeah, but I mean, if you're doing if you you're doing retention ponds, you've already got one mm. halfway there. All you got to do is put a wall up on one side to keep the water from yeah. washing through everybody's house. Well, we were talking about retention areas in because that area doesn't have a significant amount that's not coming from that field, and once that field is developed, they will be rerouting the water. So that it's not coming down like the, the water that you're getting off that field right now. I'm imagining the way that they're going to to do that. It's going to be the same or less than what they have what you've been getting currently. So I really feel like that area, and this is not to disregard your concerns at all, but I really am pretty confident in our ability to accomplish the um, the drainage improvements in that area just as things are developing. Because they're developing, we can put the requirement on the developers to fix some of those issues. Where we're talking about right now is in historic Castroville, we're not going to have any developers. Um, there's only one swath of, of properties that could happen all at once, and it's nowhere near the size of some of these other ones. Well, I know, too, but drainage ditch, as it goes out from where we are and goes down, it goes behind the Methodist Church. Well, you run into a Walmart parking area or whatever in the back of Walmart. There's a road that goes through there for for signs yep. that live up on the hill. Yep, it's like a dam. Right, got this nice drainage ditch coming, and all of a sudden, there's a road built up across it, and then if the nice notice, drainage just starts on the other side and goes on through. And that was part of what was in that um, that proposal for that that fix was the culvert under that was the culvert under the per signs road, right? Was on that. Sorry, the the private road that goes. Uh, yeah, no, the one, no, one right by Walmart. No, so Walmart. Oh, it, that's Alsatian. That's part of the Alsatian Oaks improvements, right? Yeah. I think that's yeah. part of their drainage improvement. You're remembering correctly, but yeah. it wasn't. It, it's further down, and it's part of Alsatian Oaks. Right. So that flow is going to go back behind the Walmart, like the the way that that's planned out, like the master plan. That will be taking that further down. That'll be okay. taking that east. Okay. So they're going to build a culvert or something there for that water to get that, out. That, that is my understanding. Because yes. that's what's happened. Why we have flooded is because that water couldn't get out. Right. And ours just backed up. Yep. So part of that development is having them clear the, out that kind of that L shape that goes uh, between Country Village Estates and Country Village and then continuing that down so that it can continue to flow out. Oh. I, I just sure. realized this is enough. I, Shows there, goes. Maybe was this what you think we were thinking of? Uh, sort no. of, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. And, and by the way, the, 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 yeah, as an engineer, what you have to understand is the reason it's not water flowing on here. There, yes, there's it's just like Paul said earlier, this is flat, there's nowhere for it to go. Yeah. and there's nowhere for it to go. So, the, the issue here isn't the fact that you have. That yes, it, there's just the rain that falls. If you go to that big thing of the old historic Castroville, all that stuff in those three areas of the river, all that water, it's just flat, <laughs> and 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 that's what's causing the flooding. And it's because they we never had Castroville, never had the infrastructure to drain this water out. So it, this is a different issue than what's on the east side of town. It just Flat. It's right. like what's going to happen south of 90 with any development there. It is flat south of 90 compared to north of 90 on the, the difference east side is of they're town. building, you know, detention ponds. They're going to build detention ponds. They're trying to do things to. But so before little, before they put in the first roads, it sloped to the river, and it drained naturally. Yeah. And as we've added more and more roads, we've the roads have become little dams. Paved roads, in particular, paved roads. Paved roads, yeah. They get higher and higher every time you resurface them. And you look on Athens Street, and there's two dams. Lisbon makes a dam, and Gentiles makes a dam. So, so that's, Mayor, that's, that's the issue. My challenge for you and the council is how do we terminate this? How do we take this discussion that we've had tonight and turn it into action of some sort? Right. And in my mind, there's a couple, one, one, you know, there are definite funding challenges um, that need to be considered. Uh, just to be clear, you know, one of them was a utility drainage fee. We have that in place. That's what's allowing you to go issue some more debt. Uh, I think you heard uh, 
Our financial advisor speak at the last meeting that it produces around $70,000 a year in revenue and that that's enough to go borrow between $1.2 and $1.5 million. And that's about how much it's going to take to fix Carcassia Creek. But you know, we'll see when we get those bids where we're at and, and how much that costs. That'll create a little bit of, of, of potentially a little bit of money that, that might be able to be used for something. And then we have about $330,000 in the drainage fee account that can also be used for some kind of project. But my question for you from staff is, and I guess the challenge for council and the challenge for you, Mayor, is okay, what what how are you gonna how do you want to go about developing an action plan? You could and and God forbid we do another study, right? But you've got a bunch of ideas, you've got uh, some things that I know that Herb you know sent out a list. What I would suggest is is well, anyway, I'd like like to hear what your thoughts are, but maybe you know establish a committee or something. But well, and I, I like the way that you're going with that because one of the things, I'm sorry, I'll get you in just a second. Um, so when we looked at, um, by my house, uh, when you guys looked at, like directly between myself and my neighbor, the mm -hmm. solution that came back was this great big 20 foot wide concrete culvert that was gonna cost $25,000 and just be this big concrete monstrosity. Phil said, dig it down here, build it up there, cost me 500 bucks and a little bit of time on my tractor. And so we were able to, to re, um, redirect the water and it got, the, the, like the day after we finished that, we got full proof that it worked because we had this massive deluge and it took it down there. And so I, I think that if we take these, um, these small incremental steps, and to be clear, what happened, what we took care of with that small fix instead of a $25,000 fix, it was just concrete in a very rural setting um, was as effective as like it couldn't have conveyed any more water than the other way um, so I just I want to find these creative solutions that if we take these incremental steps and we look at let's use the city lots let's talk to the diocese and uh, uh, I'm sorry the the archdiocese and see if they can maybe contribute to that Let's talk to people that have their lots and figure out how much can we, how much difference can we make? What are some of those things that we can do uh, as we go along, including, um, you know, I, I am not opposed to looking at, even if this is small incremental with, with um, some of the proposals that we've got, is getting just a bunch of small steps equal a big step. I'm saying too many words, please. Well, looking That's at okay. that map, um, the light blue is less than a foot deep, and as you get darker blue, you add a foot, I believe. That, is that correct on that diagram? But it's hard to the, that the darker the deeper, all sorts the of darker settings. The deeper. D darker, um, deeper. That's correct. So, uh, the dark spot, the deep spot, is Algiers and Lisbon. And like, a, like in a bathtub, um, you, know, you want to put the drain in the deep spot. And so if there were an inlet at Al Algiers and Lisbon that went two blocks or 800 feet to the southeast toward the mm -hmm. river, you would, you would significantly impact the water depth throughout that entire area. I mean, you know, it might not be able to capture everything, but if you can lower it a few inches, it'll make an impact on everybody's houses. And so I, I've often said, I've said it before in this chamber, that you know, if we punch a hole in the bottom of that tub, we can make a significant <laughs> impact on the effect of that flood on all of those blocks around it. Yeah. Well, no, again, I, I just want to add, like, we have, a, there's a lot of ideas floating around. Yeah. How, are you, how do y'all want to go about narrowing these ideas to actionable projects that get funded? Do we have the itemized cost for putting um, drainage starting in Lisbon and Algiers, just doing that last? Because that's the biggest. I, uh, go ahead. I just want to say, I don't think we can do it tonight in here. I mean, yes, we can probably get the number, but I, I think you're going to spin your wheels all night just looking for details. How do you, how do you want to go about like this figuring this out? I want to go do you want to do it like here this. tonight? Why not? Okay. I don't think that we're going to come up with the absolute answers, but we can give direction on the things. I mean, we've got between these two guys right here, we have so much experience in dealing with this kind of stuff. I think that it makes sense to okay. to to listen to. And this is something, honestly, I'd like to hear from you guys. And I know that, like, I, I want to hear some of these creative things where we can make a difference now. If we start, you know, you've got this as a three-phase project or a two-phase project. Let's look at it as a three-phase and start with that 
drainage that starts right there that puts the hole in the bottom of the tub. Right. Absolutely. I mean, as far as if we're talking about, let's get, going back to that, um, call it the expensive solution. There's a whole lot of ways that it can be phased out, and <clears throat> you can approach it from uh, whatever the number is. Let's say it's two or three million dollars at a time for whatever it might be. But we can look at it that way, and maybe it's it's a segment of the pipe up to you know, Lisbon or you know, somewhere that gets us whatever the budget is. The hard thing is to define is like what's the budget that we have to work with, and then we can kind of like phase so it out. So this is why we hire smart people like you, because we need you to help us make some of those determinations. If you think about like we don't I'm, I'm asking these questions this is the kind of stuff that I would expect for you guys to come to us with because I'm I mean they've got a ton of experience I have had a lot of anecdotal experience but I'm definitely not experienced or expert in any of this but you are so mm -hmm. taking a look at what is the what is the highest impact for the lowest amount of, of money and finding what that is right say if we could do this that's a part of the overall solution then Let's do that. I, I, I want to get an answer to the mayor's question. He asked, do we have pricing? I, I want to back up. These plans are, what would, if you were to say uh, percentage of completion as far as design, you know, we're tip, I'm, I'm used to hearing terms like we're at 5% design, we're at 15% design, we're at 90% design, whatever. What percentage would you say these are? Preliminary. Five percent? Right? Yeah, best. preliminary. Five percent. So I want to make that clear before we have any other further discussion about it. And I know mm -hmm. there will be more to fill than probably anybody else on the, on the dice. But these are very, very, very preliminary plans. But that said, if you had to give a ballpark cost to doing a phasing, what you heard was, okay, the bathtub is filling up at Lisbon and Algiers. That's the orange line in kind of the middle, upper middle of the screen. Um, if you were to just build out from there forward or towards the river, yeah. you know, what does that cost? Well, you've got a 96 by 64, I think was what David said, the size of that red pipe is. I was actually looking at the wrong page. That yeah. pipe is nine feet by six or by five feet. Yeah, so that there. sounds about right. Not nine feet by uh, five feet is the red line, and then the orange line is slightly smaller. So you're still looking at a lot of money. I just don't know what. But when you go down there during a rain event, when we have two inches of rain an hour, the water's not going down Algiers Street, it's going down Athens Street. Just the water's not coming down Algiers because it doesn't get that far east. It's it's all coming down Athens. So you put that drain on Algiers, there's no water to drain. Well, I don't think that's what what um, Helen has told me is that it comes you see where her house is right there? A lot of that is coming from Algiers down to Athens. It's not coming from Athens to Algiers. It's going the other the way. The way Helen explains it to me every time I go over there during a flood event is if you follow Athens down to Lisbon, right there is where the first bump in the road is, and it starts backing up. And then if you go down to the next street, Gentiles, there's a second big elevation change. It's like a dam. So the water continues to back up. Then it goes east and west. As it backs up, it starts going out. So the, the area behind Helen's house, which she owns the second and third lots between Lisbon and Athens, she owns the two middle lots. That whole block fills up with water. And it can't go anywhere because it's low in the middle. And that's why her property floods every time. And, and her neighbors. Where is her property looking at this map? If, if you go between Athens and Algiers on Lisbon Street, she lives on Lisbon Street. Yeah. Yeah. She's facing so Lisbon Street. If facing you see South where East. it says yeah. Algiers, go to your right. Basically, yeah. Yeah. right where that big, deep bottom of the, the tub the, is, the just to the left. Blue in the middle of that block. Yeah, yeah just right. to the left of that. <laughs> Those okay. five videos that are, I was sent are all on Athens Street. I don't have any videos of, of Algiers Street, but I've driven Algiers Street numerous times during flood events, 
And when you compare the amount of water on Algiers to the amount of water on Athens, there's no comparison. It's been my experience. Because it, it all turns at the top of the hill on London Street, it turns on the first street. I think, but maybe it's not as, the volume of water could be better, bigger on Athens. This doesn't show volume of water, this shows depth of water, right? I would think that where it's showing greater depth is probably also greater volume. More flow is going down that street. But <laughs> I would have to disagree. Well, it is, I would agree. I would agree with you. With the deeper, the deeper depth would make greater volume. Except if you'll notice that you had a lot of deep blue on mm -hmm. the one side of the street and a little bit on the other side. So that means that that is the blockage of the street there that's causing that, and that's why. But I'm, what I would like to suggest to you is that um, I, I, I kind of like your idea. I'd like Paul and I to visit with K Freeze and just look at that little punch in a hole in the bottom of the tub theory. Because I think there's a lot of merit to that. And because right now there is constriction there. And of course, you have Mangold's house on one side of the street and, and Bob. Uh, uh, Hancock's house on the other side, but if I if I'm where I'm think I am, but see it's it's deep, deep blue up above and not as deep blue down below. So what you got to do is right there is is get that down to the river, and I think that would solve problems, and you wouldn't be wasting your money because you can tag into that line later on. If you build it big enough in the first place, you can always add to it. Yeah, but it would just be a short little line there to take care of that block that's happening at the street. Does it make sense to do a uh, detention further up on our, our lots and maybe yeah, talk to the church? Helps in my well, you know, there's four <laughs> lot, there's four vacant lots up there. You have the two city lots and you have those other two lots. And that's a lot of detention. Every gallon that stays uphill is a gallon that doesn't have to come down Athens. Uh, until you exceed the, 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 the design storm water, yes. But if, if you're talking about these lots, like those are ours. Storm, we're in trouble because all four? Are all four, aren't you? Oh, I thought you kept talking about two of them are ours. No, no. I mean, I, I think if we did a detention, we would really need to have an outlet to that detention. And so that we would have a Why smaller would, pipe that would go down the street. Why would we need to have an outlet to the detention? If not, the, the pond will just hold water and. You well, know, I guess there, there's two ways work. to do this. One is you hold the water, and then you have a smaller pipe that it run, runs downhill. But if you put a, a pond in the ground 10 feet, then that pipe has to be 10 feet in the ground all the way down. The other way to do it is you put a big pump in there. Mm -hmm. And then after the storm or event's over, you start to pump it out. And does that mean a big pump in the maintenance of it? Yes, so you're looking at two different ways. Mm -hmm. But again, you see some property owners will go in there and put in detention basins with big pumps that then pump it up to the surface and, and carry it down. It, you just look at the maintenance issue versus the cost of constructing it. Yeah, and I was thinking maybe something more along the lines of like a, a, a five foot deep pond with a gravity outlet. But, there's yeah, but even to get five feet, you'd have to go quite a bit down the road. To, yeah. But right. but again, that's these cost comparisons. Right. But ten feet they, down, you can get twice as much. Now, in that area of town, you've got to go a long ways to get five feet. Yeah. If you and, ran a pump, if you ran a pipe out of the retention pond at Athens and London Street, and ran it down London Street, and distributed the water between Constantinople, Algiers, and Athens, distribute that water amongst those three streets, it would drain more equally to the river and we'd have less flood. Well, I think that the idea would be that you would drain it after the flood event? Or even during, if you put the pipe in down, you have to have a pipe, though, that goes down London Street. But if you put Excuse a me? pipe in, have all these dirty solutions. If you put a, so, hold on, if you put a pipe in, or during the flood event, then we need to go with the ultimate solution. But if you do it so that it retains it during the flood event and it just reduces the amount that's going down during that flood event, then you pump it out down one channel with a cheap pump when it's not raining. It's not. But, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I mean, I was just gonna go through maybe some of the options that we had talked about today. I mean, so what we heard was the idea of adding curb and gutter to the existing street. And the, I think the challenges that we're gonna run into with that is that 
where there's houses that are sitting lower and where there's driveways, those will be openings for for that flow to go in and it becomes a concern of you know, are we creating some more problems? I think when we think about dividing the flow across the three different streets, my concern becomes are we creating a new problem for somebody else somewhere else? And so we would have to be very careful of how do we distribute that flow without flooding out somebody that wasn't flooding before. And so I think we start to, at least I start to think about the detention option, one where that we preserve the existing flow path and try to detain um, and mitigate that pink flow. The other is, you know, maybe there's a way where we do a portion of the storm drain at the downstream end, like, like you were talking about. Um, and maybe those are a way to start chipping away at, you know, the problem. At least well, that we're, then we're doing something. If you look at, if we can, if we can reduce the majority or a good amount of the storm water during a during a significant rain event, and if we can reduce some of the what's coming into that, you get rid of what's sitting there, and you reduce what's going into it. I think that we could actually make a difference, and then we can go incrementally over the next few decades and fix the rest as we do that. As long as you know council continues to be diligent about that. I think that I think that would make a lot of sense. Is everybody supportive of having um, Paul and Phil go and, and meet up with AB to, to get some of this figured out? I'm good with it. Yeah. Okay. Is that what you're looking for, Scott? I'll show you. No. No, Y'all just came up with something on your own, so it's fine. I would suggest that this is the email that I received today from um, Councilman Dyer that was referencing earlier okay right and well they have that as well yeah right. uh, well yeah. I was going to suggest we can go down this list and say okay yay nay how much is this going to cost what it, and try to identify a work plan but this it added to this list I think was one of the things the mayor suggested I don't know if a grant program is, is um, feasible or not from a from a public fund fiduciary you know type liability or legal perspective but your your concept as I understood it was what if you took all like like for instance the the plot next to uh, Helen Delavan she I, I believe she owns the land next to her mm -hmm. it's it's vacant what if you did some type of grant program that encouraged natural grasses to be grown there mm -hmm. that had those 16 foot you know roots that uh, supposedly help minimize or th this type of issue and you and you did that at every kind of you went around and said okay who has about an acre and there's a bunch of them if you start to look infill lot stuff so that was one idea and then there was this other list of ideas and I think that's the only other than the doing maybe some of the projects and stages that's how it summarized that what I've heard tonight and I was to suggest well one thing you could do is try to go through and assign a rough either priority or cost or whatever you, to this list and then say let's pursue those but or you can just say hey here's two people you all go through that list and the other ideas and I would be comfortable the if they took this list because I know that herbs looked at this ad nauseum and they have I mean Paul has surveyed the entire city at least once, at least once. yeah and this is not in any priority order it's just would be up to engineers to tell us the smartest way to do and it. And then look at if there's anything that we can do with individual lots, um, whether they're infill lots, um, like lots, because there's lots, right? I think that the lot next to Dan, uh, behind Helen and off a little bit, I think that one's for sale as well. So if we can look at doing something with that. I, I, I got to tell you, if you have, like Helen's lot, there's grass on that lot, there is nothing you can do that lot that going to make it retain more water other than other than digging it down. Digging it down. I, I thought the grasses made it. No, I, there, I, there's grasses there already, but you can't. No, no, no. They aren't the right kind of grass, Phil. Yeah, that's, they, they don't, you don't go out there and you don't go, they suck in. No, I'm just telling you, that's the opposite. I'm not trying to pick a fight with you. I'm saying I, the, yeah. what I've heard, and the mayor has heard too, there have been presentations on these miracle natural grasses that have really deep <laughs> yeah. roots. And they're yeah, different you can, from your turf grass, and they do act like a sponge, and yeah. they do retain more water than 
a a normal lot. Yeah, so okay. I hear I'll have, I'll have to agree to disagree with you on that. Well, not with me. Not with me. An experience. Not with me. I'm people trying to sell me stuff all the time that oh, well, this sounds great, but if you just know the mechanics of dirt and grass and how it compacts, it don't. Yeah. It, it doesn't transport water quickly to make a measurable difference. Yeah, that's why I put number number uh, number six to, to slope that road behind Helen's house because the water all comes to the middle of the lot. If we slope the road out, it would help to drain some of the water off to Algiers and some off to Athens. So you know, there's no road there. It's a path. It's, it's an alleyway it's a dirt, or whatever. It's a dirt it is. right away. It's, it's is a it a utility, utility easement? No. And I've driven it during well, the Well, it's an overhead utility. utility. Yeah. It's, it's an overhead not utility. A, uh, it's not a, a documented or uh, It's a pri private, private alley. It's a private alley. Property. It's a right of way, though. It's a private alley. Yeah, no, it's a house. private alley. Not behind the house. Okay, so I'm comfortable if they take a look at this and uh, can work with AB and bring something back. Is everybody else okay with that? So it, and it's Paul and Phil? I'm good. Well, they volunteer for it. Okay. Man, you're so nice. <laughs> so we will work with the K Freeze, or now Lochner, and oh, Brianna, and schedule a time to meet and kind of go through these and try to come up with an actual pl action plan to, to develop it. Okay. And try and not wash the mangoes down the river. They might set up in I my think, backyard. I think that if we start tunneling underneath their house, <laughs> they'll work okay. I think we need to get these great big drills <laughs> yeah. and drill down yeah. like 500 yeah. feet. Like the sand on the river. Yeah. 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 So put it a into the aquifer. Put it right into the aquifer. I think, I think there are <laughs> some good suggestions on this list. Oh, boy. And we can protect for, we'll get the best bang for the bucks. And, the, and, and if, if they disagree with this, they can come back and say, listen, I know these two guys think they're smart, but we don't think it's going to work. But I don't think that's going to come about. But I think I think we trust. But it's in the realm of possibilities. Just realm of possibilities. Yeah. So, but I okay. think I think there's ways of mitigating this. Okay. So what I would encourage everybody that has thank you for showing up for this, and thank you for the people that are watching this. Continue to work with us. We are um, very concerned with doing things proactively. We don't want to just sit and wait and say our solution is to wait until we have enough money. Herb's point. We do actually want to do that. It costs more money. Right. And look into the Army Corps of Engineers because mm -hmm. their their main thing we, is we the have. aquatic. Yeah, we have, and I, I I can't remember now, but it was a dud. Is yeah. is basically the short. Well, we of talked story, to them but um, last year when we went to D.C. We talked specifically to them and said we want you know we want you to take a look at this, and we gave them some specific projects, and it was a dud. You if, you have, if you have, if you have. Connections there or no, not modern corp engineers at all. But it's just a thought. I mean, at the DC level, that doesn't mean anything because the decisions are made at the regional levels, yeah. the lower levels. So up at the DC level, it doesn't mean a thing. We can if, still apply. If you have yeah, some time and you might want to make some contacts, uh, a lot of this happens because we reach out to yeah. different individuals. So if you've got those, it'd be kind of cool if you would yeah. reach out to them and ask. Yeah. Well, I, I met with the regional office. I mean, it really came down to criteria, and our projects didn't meet their criteria for projects. And there was a whole set. Anyway, we chased okay. it down, but I, I will revisit it. Uh, yeah, so. it I mean, it doesn't hurt to submit either way because what one person you talk to may think it's a dud, another person that reviews it for projects like, hey, this is up our alley because according to what they say on their website, yeah. aquatic ecosystems and the flow of drainage and materials all going down to our systems. Too, so yeah. yeah, so it doesn't hurt to submit. All they can do is say no. Yep. All right. Thank you. Great. Anything else? Maybe thank all you right, for thank coming you. down again. Appreciate it. Looking forward to working with you all. Okay. All right. With this, we are through the agenda and adjourned at 8.04.